Daniel Scott from San Diego Haunted.com. Um, we're going to be talking about the Obelisk style device, or uh, more generically, an ITC word database. So, what is Obelisk or word database? It was originally built by um, Bill Chappell, who works uh, a lot with uh, Ghost Adventures and his company Digital Dowsing. Uh, the device originally used was called a SpeakJet chip that doesn't exist anymore. That uh, chip basically created uh, words and or sounds and was relatively easy to control through uh, what we call microcontrollers. And microcontrollers are really small computers, like uh, an example would be like an Arduino. An Arduino has been around for many years and it's a programmable uh, microcontroller for hobby enthusiasts, robotics. Uh, enthusiasts, things of that nature. In any case, I'd uh, written about it before and I'd always had um, some feelings about it that it just, there was really no science behind it. So I went ahead, and this is years later now, I've actually built one uh, myself. And I had a lot of help here because there's a gentleman named Kevin that built this actually as a prank gift for, a prank uh, gag toy for Halloween one year, uh, a few years back. And he did a lot of the hard work. He didn't actually package it all up so it was perfectly there in the form of what you would call a Word database style device. But with a little bit of tinkering and a little bit of know-how, you can actually build one yourself. So his version consists, and this is my prototype version, actually used an old uh, Blockbuster case. So not very uh, expensive type build. Inside there's a... Uh, a Feather M4 uh, microcontroller. There's also a um, sensor array. This little sensor right here is going. It does uh, magnetic, uh, magnetic temperature, magnetic and temperature. So, whenever there's a magnetic wave uh, fluctuation, it'll detect that. It also detect orientation uh, of movement and temperature changes. Uh, they don't make this chip. Uh, anymore, so you do have to kind of look around to find them. There's still an abundance of them, they just don't produce it anymore. Um, there's newer models, but from the, the example that Kevin gave, I stuck to what his original items were. And then uh, I have added a sound module because you need to amplify the signals that come out of the DAC from the um, M4 Feather to get the actual sound. So it's not very complicated. Um, that was pretty much where he left it, and he left it was, uh, Kevin left the device uh, basically spitting out words every like tenth of a second. Random words from the database. Um, I went ahead and added a screen to it. So there's an actual screen. You can see what the words are. And um, for functionality, it actually works pretty well. I mean, it mirrors kind of a lot of the sounds of the original Obelisk device. Now, there's been, I think we're on generation five or six of the Obelisk device. And, uh, they sell for roughly around anywhere between $400 and $600, and the newest batch are already sold out according to the website. So this is kind of just me um, putting it together. The entire build for these things, uh, roughly about $100, and that's just because this board is a little bit harder to find. Um, there's another gentleman I saw online that substituted this board out with a cheaper one. I have not tried his version, but I'm pretty sure it probably works just around the same lines. So this was my breadboard version, the original version. It came out like that, it had a speaker in the back, things like that, on off switch. So that aside, this is the final version, and it might be a little hard to see. I'm going to turn it sideways here. So it has a screen, has on, off, and sound functions. So it's going to flicker because of you know the camera system, but I'm going to turn it on, and you'll see that is actually saying a solid uh, statement there, but you can't read it because it's flickering on the camera. Um, then I'm going to turn the sound on. And as it goes through, and, and it just said the first thing, which was can. Can. When can when so you'll see that uh, I have not altered the original database of words that um, Kevin programmed originally but it's completely customizable um, go repeat those are the words that are popping out of here and then unknown pops up that's my basic go-to program if it can't uh, read the signal it just says unknown but um, that's it in a nutshell and I think you get a little bit 
clear version of the words there. There we go. So, uh, in any case, this is my uh, obelisk device. So, I took this, and I had a prototype board made, and they're extremely cheap, believe it or not. Uh, I designed the circuit board for this, so it would be very easy just to add the um, Feather M4 into this layer, then the um, sensor array here, and then I use a basic LM386 audio uh, amplifier here. And then uh, that's what's inside of this box right now. So we have this board with those sensors and devices all wired together inside of here. And it makes for a kind of a nice looking uh, package. Um, I did add one more functionality after the fact just because I don't think the speaker quality is very good with the LM386. I should have gone with like a PAM chip or one of those. But uh, So I went ahead and added the external function Power of on. an external audio Bluetooth source. Turn. So I'm just going to plug this in here. Plug this into our external audio. Uh -huh. Turn the volume up a little bit. Window. Battery low. So, sorry. Uh, person. Surface. So as you can see, the audio isn't quite 100% perfect. And this is a, the word wonder just popped out. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for a second. So, that's it in the same way and sense that Kevin had left the program without, he didn't have a display, he didn't have the external audio source or a circuit board that kind of tied it all in together nicely. Like I said, these are very simple to design. Uh, there's a lot of cool places where you can get them made. This, three circuit boards was like $21. So, ridiculously cheap and they're completely professionally made. So, uh, if you're an enthusiast and want to build something like this, not a, it's super easy. Um, I guess the last thing uh, I would say about the obelisk is that this one I actually have programmed uh, additionally and I left a side port available so I can actually reprogram this because right now I have it set just like Kevin does to shoot out all the words. Every single word that just comes to it, it's going to pop out. And as you move it around or there's temperature fluctuation or movement fluctuations, it's just going to change the words and pick different words within that database. Um, I actually had it set and programmed so that it would only trigger at certain intervals, uh, certain random intervals based on the size of change between the magnetic field and or the uh, orientation slash temperature. So that's the only modification other than uh, what you see right here. And when you set it like that, it's a lot more like the standard obelisk where you don't get words all the time. You get words, you know, here there in between but it's nothing like it was uh, like this version is right now where it's just spitting out words um, uh, so that's my version of it and I think that you know having built one it's just pretty easy to say that it, there's nothing nothing like ghost <laughs> nothing, nothing otherworldly happening I know a lot of people like to say you know I don't believe in randomness or I don't believe in chance or any of those things but you know this device is specifically built around that. And I'm not saying that Bill Chapel's version is 100% like this. This is just, if I can mimic it by building it myself, anyone can build it. There's nothing special to it. And does it take sensor readings and turn them into a, uh, random words? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it totally does that. But does that mean that a ghost is actually speaking through the box? I, I would say probably on the field, no. Uh, no, I do not think it is. Uh, but that's just my interpretation and opinion. Uh, everyone has their own, and I'm not out to bash anyone. I, I appreciate all the Bill Chapel's done in the um, paranormal field, and I don't think that it's uh, a device that I would use, but I'm sure there's plenty of, you know, you watch your ghost groups out there, a lot of music. Um, it makes good for good TV, you know, we all know that. It's entertaining, and it gives you something right there in your face that you can hear and see, and sometimes it's relative, and we know there's a lot of editing done to these shows, so, you know, there might be a hundred words that pop out and one finally hits and it gets edited to that one part. So, um, all in all, you know, it's pretty easy to build. Um, about 120 bucks, I think, you know, when everything was said and done after I destroyed a few boards myself. But 
now that I have all the stuff, I could probably build one in an hour. Um, so it doesn't require a whole lot of skill. Just uh, it doesn't require a whole lot of know-how. It just requires you to be diligent and learn learn new things. So Daniel Scott San Diego Haunted dot com. You know, leave your comments. Sorry, it's my first video. A little nervous, but you know, hope everyone out there is doing well. And uh, till the next one.